Hey everybody, welcome to the second video in our Get Monitoring series. In this video, we're going to cover the first three steps of what we call a configuration wizard. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can configure monitoring for the items we want to monitor in our network. Configuration wizards are the easy way. So, we're going to go through the first three steps and then we're going to do more steps in the next video. But this is just to get you up and running. We'll get logged into the interface, find the configuration wizards, and go through the first three steps. Here it comes. Okay, so here we are. We've logged into our instance of Nagios XI. This is the home screen. So we're going to go up here to the top in the black navigation ribbon. We're going to hover over configure. We're going to drop down and we're going to click configuration wizards. You're going to get to the configuration wizards page. You're going to see that there are a lot of configuration wizards that make it simple, simple, simple to configure a large number of things in your network. Up here, we've got a search bar where we can narrow some results. We're going to click on Windows. Today, we're going to monitor a Windows workstation. This is probably the easiest way to get started is to start monitoring your own workstation. So click on Windows, narrow the results, and we're going to click on Windows Desktop. Step one, really, really simple. Put in the IP address and you get to next. Now we're already at step two. Step two is going to show you the IP address. The DNS name is going to come up. We're going to get to the agent. If you remember in the first video we did, the one that you just watched, we talked about how Nagios XI works. We are setting up active monitoring with an agent. That's what we're doing here. So um, you're going to, you have the opportunity, you can download the work, the agent here to your workstation, and then you're going to put it on the thing that you're monitoring and you're going to configure that. That will be a different video. It will be uh, configuring the Windows agent and we'll get that. You can look at that in a different video. You can go to that. You can come back to that. That is what the process is with that. Put in a password. We're going to use a password. Awesome. You can use these other characters as well. And the metrics we're going to follow, we're going to watch ping, CPU, memory usage, uptime, and disk usage. Here's what I want to bring your attention to. Um, we got a warning threshold and we got a critical threshold. So it's going to monitor drive C in addition to the other things. And at 80%, it's going to give us a warning. And then at 95%, when the disk is 95% full, it's going to say critical. So it's going to be a different kind of thing. And that's going to come into alerting. You can change these thresholds. Maybe you want this to be 75. Um, however you want to do it, that's totally okay. You can just set it up. These are the defaults. So these are the parameters under which we're going to start to alert. So we're going to go to the next one. All right. So here's step three. This is the last step we're going to cover in this video. This is what we're saying. Monitor the host and service every five minutes. If you remember in the first video, we talked how Nagios reaches out to the agent. The agent gets the information and responds to the Nagios box. This is where we set how often that happens. Now, five minutes is the default interval, and most people stick with that. We think it's a great interval. The smallest interval you can put in is one minute. And then if you wanted to monitor many, 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 many things, as many things as you could, you can also increase this to say 10 minutes, and that will generally allow you to monitor more things with the same resources. Um, and then what should we do when the problem's first detected? Well, we have it set up to recheck every one minute for up to five minutes before generating an alert because CPU might be over 95% one time, but if it doesn't stay that way, do we really need an alert? Now, if it does stay that way, we probably do need an alert. So that's what that sets. So you've just walked through the first three steps of configuration wizards. Why don't you take a look, see what you can get done on your workstation. And then in the next videos, we're gonna talk about steps four and five. Thanks for being here.